eight matches today, so every single winner is going to the top eight for the next day. Exactly. And starting with Group A, we see Ness actually lost to Faley in his match, and we had Eloise lose to Vin. So two of the players who qualified through Swiss knocking out the invited or pro-qualified players in this group. So really impressive for them already. Yeah, that's right. And Faley, we told you a little bit about already, but Vins is a player that you may not have heard of. He is a, a French representative, as you can see, plays for Melty Esports. He is a, a former very, very high level uh, Yu-Gi-Oh player. I believe he was French national champion in that game. So definitely has card game experience, trying to make that transition now and have a big breakout performance in Hearthstone. Yeah, I think he's uh, sort of falls in the category. We've seen uh, a lot of other players where they're having a good, consistent performance, but nothing big yet. Right. And this is, you know, as we said, Insomnia is a huge major, you know, great mm -hmm. part of the, ca the Hearthstone calendar, I would say. Yep. So if you can perform here, then it's really going to be that huge win he wants. Correct. And the Faley is 8-0 currently after this one, right? So Absolutely, yeah. Still undefeated. Yeah, and we didn't mention that we have also RDU as a uh, second champion in the tournament, right? Yeah, we saw him on the uh, on the qualifiers. Uh, he was in there. So RDU and Ness, the two previous True Silver champions, are back. But moving on to Group B, as we see the results there, this is uh, another. I mean, all the groups are pretty stats. Let's be honest. You know, the top Correct. 16 is kind of nuts. Yeah. We oh, see well, this, this is yeah, just there's like ah. and then there is this group. Oh my God. Firebat, Super JJ, Oskaka, and Sirez. Like it. It's just insane. Yeah, well, you have two world champions in this group. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and one of them is still through. Um, Oskaka defeated Xeres and uh, now we'll be playing against JJ on stage. This will be the second match of the day and I can't wait for this match. Yeah, it's uh, going to be unbelievable. So you see just that down there in the lower bracket, the players that lose in this first round are not out. They now play each other for the right to meet the winner of the games that we will see on stream to then play again for a second chance. Yep. Yeah, so this group looking really crazy overall, but like you said, all the groups are pretty nuts. You know, this one does have the two world champions in, and I'm just as excited to see JJ versus Oskaka coming up. So, um, yeah, let's go to the group C. Yeah. Who do we have here? This is the former champion of two server champions, RDU, but he lost against Fire. Look at that. Fire is a, a former teammate of both of ours, Raven, yeah. uh, when we were up and coming in the scene. He, uh, he took a little bit of a back seat from Hearthstone for a little while, but you know has come back in a big way in this tournament. Stampeded through the Swiss, did extremely well with Druid, and now has kept that up sending RDU down to the lower bracket. Yeah, really impressive win for him overall and puts himself in that winner's bracket, as we said. So, like, really high chance. Even if he loses his matchup versus Chaki that's coming up later on today, he's got another chance at winning and qualifying into top eight. So, once you win that first game, you're in a really solid position. You know, the pressure isn't on as much to really, you know, it's not like the guys that we can see RDU and Durf2000, another UK player, yep. who are in the position they're in now where if you lose, that's your run over. Even after making it through the Swiss, you could be out in one, you know, one more game of the day. Right. And Ch Chucky as well moved through into that last game against Fire. Of course, Chucky picked up recently by Luminosity Gaming, who've picked up a lot of the, the best NA competitive players. But uh, as some people have pointed out, most of the big events are in Europe. So it's good for Chucky to be able to come over here and compete in a huge event like this. Yeah, it's always great to see Chucky. But let's have a look at Group D will be the final group of the day. And also just yet another stacked group as we see the players come up now. It's going to be Sixo, Ball Control, Neyman, and Ecop. We see Sixo actually beat out Ball Control to go through into the winner's bracket. Ecop beating out Neyman, which is a really good win. Ecop's been performing really well this tournament. And then we have uh, Neyman actually oh, look beat, at that. We have beat Ball Control. Yeah, some of the matches are going on. Like, like you said, the matches off stream are happening that aren't qualifying matches. So Neyman actually beat out Ball Control, and we'll see them play later on. But that is it for the groups, as I believe we are very, very close to bringing you the first game of the day, guys. Yeah, that's, that's the end of the talk stone. We'll be hard yeah. soon. <laughs> The first game, first match of the day, which will be Faley versus Finns. I'm really interested if there will be any interesting decks here today, because we still have two wings of Karazhan, right? But right. I I would expect that like the biggest card that we'll see make an impact on this top 16. And just for the record, the, the deck lists aren't out there. We don't know. The players don't know. They're trying to gather information as the tournament goes along as to who's yeah. playing what. But I think. The biggest card we'll see make an impact is probably Arcane Giant. At mm -hmm. least I hope so, because I just love that card personally. I think it's given people a lot of incentives to play combo decks again, which uh, I think is very healthy for the state of the game. Well, it's not maybe 
that combo. Right? An example, you can play it in the Token Druid, when it's just another threat that is being sure. discounted is as you play the game. kind of a combo right? deck, though, right? Yeah. But then anyway. you also have the Warrior yep. with the Archon Giant, right. and those are the main two decks, right? Yeah, and we've just seen it. Live wow. updates for you guys. We are not messing about today. Firebat's already been eliminated oh, by Zyrez, so he is already out. So, you know, the, one of the groups of death, we could have called it with the two world champions, now only has one left in uh, Oskaka. So it's looking pretty good. But speaking about the game that's coming up, we did see a double warrior ban as we saw the classes Aww. pop up briefly. So, uh, you know, the ban's like really, really important in Last Hero Standing because you can get sweeped by one single deck and right. you, your ban has to be really spot on. Like, what do you think about the Warrior ban? It's something we've seen in many, many tournaments recently with the sheer power of Warrior. Yeah. And do you think, like, the, it's almost becoming an auto ban for everyone's lineups now? I don't think it's actually the power. I think it's the variety of the decks that Warrior is bringing. Maybe when you, when you don't know exactly what is happening in the first match, right, uh, you will probably want to ban the Warrior because you have no clue. Is it Dragon Warrior? Is it Combo? Is it just Control, Cartoon, or whatever? Uh, but later into the, the matches, when you know exactly which warrior is, is your opponent playing, then maybe you can just switch your, your band then, right, to something else. Yeah, we see the classes on the screen, but just to let you know, the names are actually switched. So uh, the player on the left on the camera is Faley, and the player on the right is actually Vin. So flip that image in your head for just a quick second. How are you fancying the lineups, guys? Well, let's see, both play droids. Yeah, no surprise there. Almost certain to be, uh, you know, a token druid, yog druid type variant at this point. We did see some uh, Maligoth druid poking its head out recently, but probably emerged a little bit too late to be submitted for this tournament. Uh, same with the giant ramp druid, which we did see a little bit. You know, the Barnes ramp druid with the Asharaj and huge. When the like curve there. starts at five or right, something, exactly. it's like so yeah. ridiculous. Yeah, um, I think that deck came a little bit too late as well. So I'd be expecting mostly yog druid, but yeah, double warrior ban, no surprise. But Faley uh, with the Mid-range hunter. Yes. Little bit surprising, Raven. I know you'll be a huge fan of that. Are you sure it's a mid-range hunter? I am. I'm the, not. Well, um, Cursed has actually been playing a very successful face hunter true. list recently, and I yeah. know a few players um, in the Swiss actually brought face hunter because they were really happy with the list from what they played of it. But it looks like we're getting ready to get into the game, so I'm going to leave this first match of the day in the very capable hands of Sotil and Lothar. Enjoy the game, guys. Thank you so much, Raven. And yep, just once again, I promise you that is Faley down the bottom and Vins at the top. So these are the wrong way around. I believe that is Faley at the bottom on the Shaman and Vins at the top playing the Druid. No great surprises so far in either hand in terms of new cards. I'm sure this Shaman deck is just relatively standard, consistent stuff that we've seen for a while. Mm -hmm. Maybe with a Maelstrom portal thrown in there somewhere. You think so? It's possible. We may we may or may not see it, but the, the Yog Druid is what I'm really looking forward to here to see if he's decided to go with those Arcane Giants. I think you should. Oh, there you okay. go. Okay. <laughs> How did you know that? I mean, <laughs> I, in my testing, Maelstrom Portal is like great when you have Thanos in your deck. It's like amazing with Thanos, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, without Thanos, it feels like sometimes. Do you have enough justification to just play Maelstrom Portal as an Arcan Explosion? I think yes. A lot of the time, um, I think people try and wait generally and get too much value with it. Honestly, <laughs> like just going turn one Tunnel Trog or turn one Argent Squire, ideally, and then using that to trade into, say, like a Hunter's 3-2 mm -hmm. and curving out on two with the Maelstrom Portal is a totally fine outcome sometimes. Um, see, I'm a fan of it in the deck, personally. It's done good work for me, and uh, uh, Faley definitely seems to agree here going with the Maelstrom Portal. So it's Vince playing... I think it's Vince actually playing Shaman. It is not. I'm 100% sure it's Faley playing Shaman. Well the names are revert. Faye oh, yeah, right, is at yeah, the yeah. bottom. Jesus yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah, you're correct. Anyway, this is a six six open a sick opening hand. Double innervate is something that you always want to have yeah. uh, in your opening hand. Starting up with a this is also a problem when you play innervate a minion and it doesn't have a lot of HP points and he, he, you need to get some immediate value. Right. In this case, you're just cycling through the deck, so even if you lose the dragon right now, it's not that big of a deal because you still manage to cycle through your, through your deck. Yep. So, and, and he has the second innervate as well. Right. Yeah, I mean, so much mana, uh, mana, mana ramp in the opening hand from Vince. It has now picked up that Ancient of War that he can use to uh, spend some on, but 
Bailey is proving himself not to be a dreamer here. He could have pressed the button and got that one out of three spell power totem and just bolted down the Drake, but he's just going to go with the consistent play of developing the Tuscar here. But, you know, playing stats into an Azir Drake always feels pretty terrible because that's just yeah. kind of what they want you to do. Exactly. You can see the Wrath is there available to punish if uh, Vins wants to go down that line, and there doesn't seem to be anything too much better, even with that Innovate in hand. Yeah, well, if you want to curve out, you need to keep the inner thing, right? So, right. Uh, especially with the Wild Grove now, it, it, it changes a lot when it comes to the dynamic of, of the matchup. Mm -hmm. So I'm not surprised that he went with the Rev, especially that you still get the value from the cycle, which is insane. When you think about it, the Innervate not only allowed you to cycle with the other Drake, but also made it possible to Rev on turn 3 and kill that 3-drop that gets your card. That's right. insane, and it's all allowed because of Innervate, not right, because, right. because of the fact that you have Azure Drake on your board. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that. Yeah, the Wrath being allowed to cycle has essentially replaced that lost card with the Innervate yeah. in his hand, right? So it, mm -hmm. it's kind of just self-replaced itself. But Faley, again, does just have options here to remove this Drake. None of them are fantastic, but he doesn't really have a great development play here. So he's just going to go with the Maelstrom Pool, make his mind up about which tool he wants to use. going to use the Rock by a weapon so he doesn't overload himself next turn has the Drake to develop on five, so that makes perfect sense. I mean, the Belsum Portal can be a third trog, right? Sure. <laughs> Definitely can. <laughs> it can even uh, get you that injured Cloudier dream sometimes. Oh, my Jams God. Jams a 2-4, yeah? Yeah. Had it happen? Wow. Well, that's a good draw. Now, now there are a few uh, differences in this matchup, because um, at this point, Vince is aware that not, th this, this Shaman deck is not very aggressive. Sure. It's a more mid-ranger version, yep. so you can waiter options and because of that fact that he knows this is a slower matchup he's also allowed to actually play the ref or cycle get the value going on uh, in in the faster matchups this is actually not really that important because you will be dead without using all of your cards in your hand anyway right but in this case now it's a question of how greedy are you are uh, are you right in this situation i wouldn't be surprised if you just w exactly play the four drop and not do anything else right that's because you still have a lot of minions they can play uh, in the upcoming turns, and uh, it's about it. Yeah, Faley just chooses to develop a Drake into this Violet Teacher, not going to decide to hex it. Uh, he knows that he does have that Lightning Storm ready in his hand, so he doesn't have to be too worried about tokens here. In fact, if Vins were to take this bait and just make a huge all-in play on a bunch of 2-2 tokens on the board, for example, Faley will just be happy to punish that on the following turn. So I kind of like this decision, honestly, to leave the, the, the Teacher alone here and just develop the Drake. Mm -hmm. Vince is aware of that, that this most likely will be in um, Faley's hand because of the fact that he just played a minion without killing the, the village, which usually is a minion that you want to clear up immediately if you don't have an answer to the one ones. Right? right. So an interesting development of, of um, the board, but fortunately for Vince, whatever option he chose, there's always an answer. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, any any combination of, you know, Lightning Bolt and Storm could take care of things. If he just went all in on this one big minion, Hex was there to take care of it. So I like this decision from Faley on the previous turn, like I said, just to take the risk here. And now this is such a huge punish for him. He's taking control of the board absolutely comprehensively now. Mm -hmm. No good answer from Vince. Like, this is the problem with Druids. When you're behind, one of your answers is Azure Druid Swipe. Mm -hmm. And that's about it, apart from Yogg. Yep. So you can't really fall behind. You, then you, you kind of want to play Sylvanas on board and get some luck with it, right? You, sure. You want to get the biggest minion for your opponent, but uh, still, there can be announces uh, like in the form of second hex. Uh, Shaman is, is the class that can actually spawn a lot of minions and give you just something that is practically worthless. Right. So not a, not a lot of options um, for Vince here. Yeah, and Vince choosing to go with the, the Fandral play here instead of just dropping Sylvanas, which I think is a, a bit of a risk, because like you said, I think you can... Honestly, if I was Vince, my read on Faley's hand would be you know, probably an AoE in there, you know, another portal yeah. or a storm, yeah. and probably no Hex, which why I was fine with him, like, dropping the, the Ancient of mm -hmm. War. Mm -hmm. uh, that, you know, my Hex read would have been wrong, but I think the storm is is relatively well telegraphed from Faley here, being I willing to that. leave up a, a Violet Teacher, so... I'm surprised that he didn't went with this, because, I, I, as I said, the comeback mechanism now is kind of kind of low, right? Right. If you, you don't plan to um, play the... Sorry, if you plan to play the Sylvanas next turn, then you're 
a turn behind and you give your opponent a turn more to actually draw the second hex. Mm -hmm. As you said, because of the fact that Engine of War baited out the hex, basically, sure. uh, you have bigger chance that the Sylvanas will actually get some value, so I'm really surprised by that. Yes, yeah, so the Storm is going to come out here. He's going to pick his option here. He can choose to keep the more aggressive minion on the board in the form of the Tunnel Trog and trade with the Drake. Uh, or he can just trade off the Tunnel Trog to keep the more stats. But yeah, I think he's going to trade off. His spell power has done the job. Mm -hmm. He's going to start pushing that six per turn now. And now we're in the situation where if Sylvanas comes down now, it's just a little bit too late because she's going to have to chew through these Feral Spirit Wolves first. And it's 10 damage to the face already on board. Yeah. 10 damage. Yep. Uh, that's like insane amount of damage that you can't really sustain, uh, especially with the new form of druids that have almost no heal. Only card that can heal you basically is Feral Rage, and right. not every single druid is playing Feral Rage anymore. Yeah, I mean, people had to make room in this deck for that Arcane Giant, which has, of course, been drawn now by Vins. So one of the first cards that people are looking at are those three-drop spells and cutting down on the amount of copies of you know, Feral Rages and Mulches yeah. that they're playing. Okay. So healing is definitely at a premium for Druid right now. It's not something that they do too easily. So he's going for the Wiregrove to basically bait him out with a Lucky Yog. That's the only game plan I see here. Yeah, unless some absolute miracles can happen with those Arcane Giants, I have seen some Druids experimenting with just, you know, uh, one Mark of the Wild or one Sun Fury Protector just to try and get big value out of those 8-8s as taunts, you know, similar to what Handlock used to do with Molten Giants, but um, that's fairly non-standard, so I'd be a little bit surprised if we do see it, but barring that kind of miracle, this does look like we're already on a Yogg game. So now, um, Fale is counting the damage. I, I feel like he's he's thinking about keeping uh, the Trog alive because of the Doomhammer next turn. Sure. Is that 6-8? That's 10 12. Yeah, yeah, he's actually doing that. I'm kind of surprised because that leaves you open to a swipe. Yes, it does. So I'm not really sure if that's the better thing to do, but it set up, sets up lethal for the next turn, right? Because it's Ooh. 10, Ooh. 12, 14, 15. No, he would be still two away. He would have 8, 10, 15. Yeah, he would. So interesting. That is a, because that's a strange I was just. decision for sure. If you. Like, he went with that play as he as that would set up a lethal for next turn. So I was right. sure that he counted it correctly. Okay, he would have it, but... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he would have ripped the bolt and looked like a god. This gave his opponent the only out. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, it gave him multiple outs. It gave him, you know, second Druid of the Claw to charge into the 6-3 if he needed to. Wow. Like, you obviously knew there was no wrath from your opponent, so keeping it hidden behind taunts seemed like a, a solid way of doing it, or just trading it off and keeping your taunt minions, but it didn't I'm seem baffled. like that push was going to hold against a lot of reasonable outcomes from Vin. So, yeah, surprising decision just to weaken the state of his board overall, just to go all in on that, that Tunnel Trog Doomhammer plan this turn. I mean, when it comes to, like, the long-term plan in this game, I feel like the Shaman is always winning. Mm -hmm. Because you have so much cards that are actually just finishing up the game when your opponent is at 2 HP, right? You have the Doomhammer, so you outvalue your opponent's hero power four times sure. every single turn, right? You have two Lightning Bolts, two Lava Bursts. But remember, this is a mid-range deck. This isn't even the aggressive deck, so he's going to be playing a lot less burst. He might have some Fire Elementals at the top of his curve that mm -hmm. the aggro deck wouldn't have, but don't think we'll be seeing too many Lava Bursts come out. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. So no, no Yogg this turn, which is, which I also find interesting, because when you play more minions on your board and then you plan to play the Yogg, mm -hmm. then it's kind of, kind of wacky, right? Sure. You, I mean, you can lose your entire board. You can actually give your opponent an out as well. Right. So I'd rather play the Yogg here than the Sylvanas. It's possible, he, but he may have decided, honestly, like, his opponent's at 17 and he has 13 power on board right now, so he may have just decided he doesn't even need to risk any kind of Yogg-Saron disaster in this game. Mm -hmm. You know, that swipe may have been so game-defining that what looked like purely a Yogg game at one point, he now thinks he can win purely just through racing down the Doomhammer. Uh, again, he knows, having seen cards like Azure Drake, that he's playing against a less aggressive deck than he might be used to. Ooh, now that's a tough decision. That's a really, really tough is. decision, because first of all, you need to... Okay, never mind. He, he went with the Raven Knight, but if you want to play the Yogg, you have to decide, do you attack first? 
yep. do I wait for buffs? Right. If I wait for buffs, then I can finish the game maybe this turn. But there's a chance. Oh my god. Well, second Raven Idol, right? Yeah, um, the, the play is take second Raven Idol, get innovate again, and then innovate your. <laughs> That's the correct yeah. line of play in this situation. There's actually a lot of choices here. I think real world, he made the decision first time to Raven Idol instead of playing Yogg. So picking Innovate there, that's exactly the same decision, right? Yeah. Do I Raven Idol or do I Yogg? And there you go. Feral, Feral Rage, Rage is going to be a huge deal. So uh, rewarded for, for bravery here, honestly. Uh, Melty Melvin's decided that he wanted to take control of his own fate and not leave it in the hands of Yogg. And he takes, of course, Whistle of the Old Gods is in fact just lethal. So that's probably a better pick. God. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? Okay, maybe we missed something. Right, 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 yeah. <laughs> like I said in the previous time, I mean, it was damage in play. Wait, wait, wait. We were right. Feral Rage was lethal as well. Feral Rage was It was lethal. actually more damage. Yeah, that's true. Because, so, yeah. So he just wanted to do it in style with Wiss of the Old Gods, yeah, because exactly. everyone knows that is the single most stylish card in Hearthstone. So. And that's the beautiful, beautiful trophy waiting for the third champion of True Silver Championship. Wait, is it like illuminating? It's kind of like like it, right? <laughs> you just seem enchanted by the trophy right yeah, now. It's like, beautiful. Uh, it is. It's a gorgeous. I, I like minimalistic things, you know. Yeah. And this sure. is very mini minimalistic. Anyway, let's go back to the game. I I feel like fairly through the game. I think that's very possible. Yeah, the decision just to go all in on that tunnel trog. Uh, with, yeah, with Doomhammer in hand, you can understand the thinking, mm -hmm. right? But. Mm -hmm. He weakened his board so much to AoE effects. I think he was kind of confident in the world where there wasn't a swipe in hand because of how much aggression he's had and there yeah, just yeah. wasn't really answers. He just kept playing minions into it, but he still opened himself up to answers being drawn all the time. And you know, even things like Nourish coming out and picking up answers would have been uh, a nightmare for him. So it seemed like a strange decision, but he's now going to have to fight his way back and he's going to queue up his own token druid into the mirror match here. So the mirror match is very volatile, right? It's um, we can historically speaking, we can um, say that every single druid mirror is all about innervates and wild groves, more likely than about innervate than the wild grove itself, right? Because you can just get so much damage from a single minion before your opponent even plays something on the board. Right? Uh, I mean, it's it's possible. I had this exact argument with uh, with Admirable during uh, America's prelims in, and he w he is adamant that you throw away Innovate in a Druid Mirror because the, really? win the win rate with Wild Growth is so much higher uh, than, the, than the win rate with Innovate that it's it's worth doing it. Um, I kind of agree with him in a sense that like I'd rather have Wild Growth most of the time, but not to the extent where I'd risk having neither by throwing away an Innovate, right? He insists that the stats play that out and sure, he's a very accomplished Druid player. He probably knows what he's talking about, but... Right now, Vince is the man with the Innovate, and Faley just with Living Roots, but no real mana ramp in his hand until that turn four Maya Keeper. Still, Maya Keeper is a great addition to the um, to the deck, and great in mirror match because it's something that you wanted to have in your deck, uh, sorry, in your hand anyway. But you, it it's actually a creature, sure. so that that's put a threat, uh, that's putting a threat on board which requires a wrath or at least a turn of attack from a bigger minion. Yep. So that's something that you always want to see. Uh, but unfortunately for Faye, like this turn is kind of awkward. Do you use the living? This is the second living woods. If you put three minions on board right now, you saw that your opponent didn't have wild growth. You might still, on turn three, just do hero, just use a hero power, kill one of your one ones. And but that leaves two minions on board that can be buffed by an example power of the one. Right, they can benefit from Savage Roar if your opponent is playing the Savage Roar because that can also happen, right? Yep. So you don't want to usually leave those around. So I feel like using the, li uh, the Living Roots just for one ones here, it, although uh, not mana efficient, is the correct way just to put pressure on your opponent and make him uh, make his life harder when it comes to decision making. Yeah, I like it. I mean, this this matchup is generally defined by. You know, who gets the mid-range threats down and who really like starts to snowball their, their their position in the mid game you know who gets a violet teacher to go off first who gets a fandral to go off first from that position the other druid is always having to play from behind and is usually not able to come back uh, asterisk unless yog which is kind of just a thing you have to apply to every matchup with this deck um so yeah i like making the push early and just making the other druid player play defensively but 
Vins responds by refusing to play defensively and just goes ahead and ramps up his mana, which I like as a response as well. Yeah, I like it as well. And uh, that allows him to play as a dragon to living roots if there will be a Maya Keeper, which is a perfect answer to the turn three from uh, Faili. Right. He could have just innovated out the Drake, for example, but then he wouldn't. He would have been basically obligated to swipe the next turn. Come hell or high water, he just had to swipe. Yeah. Because um, it's what his mana said. So just going for the more consistent ramp, as you can see, is already paying off because now he has a natural curve. He can swipe this turn or he can Drake. Then he goes into Ancient of War and then he's already moving towards Yogg if he can load up some spells in the meantime. Interesting that he's going for this swipe because it's turn five for Faili. So there's no way unless he has an Innovate uh, for a Violet Teacher Power of the Wild. Sure. But then he plans ahead, so turn 7 has to be Ancient of War, so yep. you don't have time to kill the 1-1s. One right. This is why he uses a swipe. Yeah, he doesn't. He wants to be playing Ancient of War into as dominant a board position as possible, so that kind of obligated him to take care of the board that turn. You can see Faili as well, double Arcane Giant, both of these players favoring the Giant list. No surprise. It's just such a hugely powerful card in the deck. It just kind of serves as another refill, essentially, that is a Moonfire, Lothar. Yeah, that means Bailey there's a... is playing Malagos. There's a really big blue dragon in the deck. Yep. Just waiting to be drawn. All right, this is oh. awesome. Now I'm excited. And there's a Molt, which is an MVP in this matchup because it brings so much tempo to the table. Uh, it's just insanely powerful. And the thing is, uh, Vince will have problem, a really huge problem with those two Ark and Giant, even with one. One is a oh, problematic yeah. card, and two, when you will see, like an example, turn eight, and he will play both. Mm -hmm. What do you do then? You have only one ult in your deck, your minions are, are inferior uh, to the eight eight giant, so this will be prob really problematic for, for Vince going down. It will. Vince, we didn't get a chance to see his full Raven Idol selections there, but he just took another Raven Idol, which makes sense, because right now he's just trying to supercharge that Yogg in his hand. He's running out of resources, he has board initiative for now, but I think based on the amount of cards your opponent has, you feel like you're going to lose the board at some point. Um, so his priority just seems to be to supercharge that Yogg as much as he can to try and uh, pick him up some more resources when he loses, or if he loses his grip mm -hmm. on this board. So for Fail, it would be the best to play four spells this turn. Is it possible? You can Mulch, you can Moonfire, and you can play two Wild Groves. Right. And then you can play double Arcan Giants on the next turn. Uh, so the Giants would cost three each at that point? Uh, or four each. They started at eight, right? Yeah. Uh, you'd be using the two Wild Growths up to ten mana next turn anyway. So it's a little bit of overkill, but I mean, yeah, I, I definitely see the logic with it. Um, so with the Blood Mage coming down here, he's going to have nine mana next turn, so he still has the option for uh, a Moonfire to discount. That doesn't get him quite to the point where he can mm -hmm. play both Giants. Um, but yeah, the, the double wild growth does seem to be a little bit of overkill on that turn, especially since he'll probably want to use that second wild growth to cycle now at this point. So I'm okay with this line. You can see just an update. You'll be a happy man, Lothar. Yep. I'm just reading it. The news flash. Yeah. Are you defeated Dev 2000? I yep. mean, he's like he's like a that's like a nickname from a really old series TV series, right? He's just a, yeah, he's a he's a prototype Hearthstone robot that's been <laughs> built, <laughs> sent back in time. Right, Dearthbot 2000. He has been eliminated though. Unfortunately, the UK representatives are dwindling a little bit in this tournament already. Although it has to be said, you know, they've all done fantastic. There was a whole day of this tournament that you didn't get to see on stream as they played through Swiss. So even getting to this top 16 in the first place is a huge achievement. Seven actually rounds of Swiss. That's right. That could have been just another day of the tournament. But we're starting from today. Two Raven Idols as well. Fade is just drawing two Wild Groves, two Ra Raven Idols in a row. Mm -hmm. And yeah, Fandral, double Raven Idol, will take the Arcane Giants down to four each. So he will be a little bit off. And but he's, he's dead next turn. This he is the is. problem, right? He is very, very, very dead at the moment. He does have the option to Moonfire down a 1-1. One, one. Does that keep him alive? There would be, what, 5, 10, 10 damage on the board, plus 8, 18, plus another 3, 21, plus the Living Roots. So he'd still be dead. So yeah, he does have to find some answers here from these Raven Idols. Swipe? Yeah, swipe would be a dream. Perfect. Squirming sure. Tentacle. Okay. Stop. Hey. Ooh. 
Well, Feral Rage is a card, but it gives you... <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh my god, I feel like awful now. Um, but yeah, that's not the swipe that he was looking for. Ooh, Ooh. that's a, that's a spicy one. Snapped it. I think it's. I think you actually agree to this in the terms of service when you sign up to the Hearthstone client. Which is, <laughs> if Deathwing is offered off Raven Idol, you are actually contractually obligated to pick it. So now let's count damage. Ten damage on board. Ra uh, Savage Roar is eight, so that's eighteen plus three from um, Power of the Wild. That's twenty-one. 21 and then roots Living Roots three 20, is twenty-four. Yeah. Twenty. Four actually, and spell 25 damage. with the hero power. Yeah, I, I counted it last turn as well, and because of the spell damage and the extra hero power, he had enough to cover Faley, even if he took care of the 1 1 and armored up with the hero power. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, having done uh, only one of those things, not gaining the armor, he's relatively easily covered here by Vins, and Faley is going to get the bad news that the Living Roots is going to finish him off, and Vins. Goes out to a 2-0 lead with what I think, I haven't looked at the stats in detail, but just my impression from watching games, Yogg Druid, Token Druid has been the dominant deck in the Swiss portion of this tournament so far. I would say so. Like uh, the, stre the strength of the deck comes from three things, actually, right? right? Because you have the potential of just making a lot of tokens yep. and just finishing up the game with that, because that's a really powerful strategy against a lot of decks which lack um, AoE. Then you have the second strategy of just going off Fandral, yep. which is an amazing value card. Yep. Right? Uh, then you have Ar uh, sorry, Arcan Giants, so that's the third way, and I actually missed the fourth way, which is Yogg. Yep. So you have four win conditions. That's really unprecedented when it comes to uh, decks with just 30 cards. Yeah, I mean, the way, the way Yogg Druid works, honestly, is it's just kind of like a threat gauntlet for your opponent right it's like some sometimes you're playing from behind a little bit and you have to clear up against aggressive decks but if you're playing against another mid-range or control deck you basically say to your opponent every turn okay here's my violet teacher deal with that all right good job here's my fandral now deal with that all right nice here's an arcane giant deal with that yeah. oh well now i just yogged and drew six cards and play some secrets like deal with that oh you've finally run out of answers i guess i win like that's that's yeah. basically just every yog druid game ever exactly and you still have cards like Engine of War, but what is happening Let here? me just stop you right there, Lothar, because this is Pantry Spider Hunter. My god. All right, predictions. There are Hunter's Marks in this deck. There have to be, should, right? If you're playing Pantry be. Spider. If he's playing play Double Flame, flame Jugger Yeah, there has, well. right. there has to be. So two Freezing Traps and at least one Hunter's Mark mm -hmm. just to play against those pesky Druids. But the problem is, if you're facing a Token Druid, still it's not the best option. Sure. Mm -hmm. And yet again, again Vin's Raven Idol on one, two innovates in hand as well, means he'll have all the mana he needs for the early game here. So, whoo! Oh, oh, that's that. That is a, a spicy one. <laughs> what do you choose here? Yeah, I mean, you don't you don't live the dream. I saw Naaman do it in a tournament yeah. very recently. I, I think and everyone I was remembers that. I screaming at him on Twitter. It was like the dumbest thing I've ever seen. But he won the game. He like, did, yeah. yeah. Sometimes it works out like that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, a Moonfire is actually a um, decent tool in this matchup. Because if you have the Ass Drake, yep. then you can kill a 2-drop. Just like that. Mm -hmm. It's actually fantastic. But I mean, even even right now, he can just turn them into 1-1s one if he wants to. Like, what is happening here? Yeah, just what, what Moonfire, is happening here? coin, innovate, power of the wild. GG, good game, Yogg Druid. How, how can you pull that off? It's turn two, innervate, moonfire, power of the wild shenanigans. And the hunter is just like, yeah, I don't have a way of coming back from this. Hey, Pantry Spider can get some work done, all right? If he drew Pantry Spider right here, Vins would not have known what hit him. Yeah, well, like, two of those, yeah. man. <laughs> two. Two Pantry Spiders from one card. The value. I mean, in all seriousness, Bailey is in a mess right now. Not only is he staring at this overwhelming board, but he actually just can't deal with the Violet Teacher unless he rolls Huffer from Animal Companion, and even then, it's trading your whole board into it. He knows there's still a coin in Vinz's hand, so he knows if that Teacher's not answered, it's guaranteed at least some value. Everything is just looking extremely miserable right now. For to Bailey. be honest, I was thinking that Vince should have uh, used the coin last turn. I thought so too, yeah, I agree. It's just a zero mana 2-2. Two, two. How right. do you not go for that? Especially if you're lacking a 4-drop for right. the next turn. 
It yeah. doesn't really matter if you, if you will play that three drop, uh, sorry, four, five drop on turn four, because mm -hmm. that coin translates into, I would say, at least four damage, mm -hmm. maybe a little more. Right. And board control at the same time. So I'm kind of surprised he didn't, he didn't go for that. Yep, uh, I agree with you. I think one extra 2-2 two -two here may have made all the difference just to push through that extra damage. Just so, you know, it, put you, it basically puts you in top deck mode where you can say, okay, Drew to the Claw charges at face, that's four damage. Then all I need is, you know, a swipe, maybe a Living Roots. So I can just get the job done with my hero power. So yep. I definitely would have liked using the coin. It would have been a lot more all-in than his line, which allowed him to, to bring out one of these five drops that he has or the Drew to the Claw specifically a turn quicker. But you're going to see here, because he lost that 2-2, two -two, that extra 2-2 two -two might be the difference between board dominance and no board dominance right now because mm -hmm. he is down to a single 2-2 against a 2-3 or in fact a 2-1 after the flame juggler hits he could actually still be in control of this board right now if he had yeah. another 2-2 yeah, exactly so now failure would have been at uh, 11 damage most likely mm -hmm. so, oh, sorry 11 health right if 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 vince would be super aggressive yeah. in this case i i feel like he needs to go into the charge mode anyway Hmm. Interesting. So I guess, I mean, Hunter doesn't excel at dealing one damage, I guess. So by protecting his 2-1 on board, I guess he's saying, you know, my 2-1 gets to attack face again next turn. I mean, I'm okay so. with not, um, with just attacking with the 2-1 to the face. I'm kind of surprised that he didn't go for the charge. No, but I mean, he's protecting his 2-1, right? So yeah, he's yeah, saying yeah. that. But he could have also just trade with the Oh, four. I see what you're saying. Right, right, right. Okay, sure. Because he's doing this anyway. See? Sure. All right, yeah, in that case... Sure. I mean, the only two options in my head there were like taunt mode or charge and hit face because we need to start dealing damage because the hunter will climb back into this game very, very quickly if we give them time to play cards like Ooh. high main. Stealth. It cannot taunt. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Innkeeper, for that handy tooltip. Always, always there to, uh, to sort things out for us when we're just slightly unclear about whether our stealth minions can or in fact cannot taunt. So the Rav... <laughs> Just clears up the way. You have six damage to the um, to the face from the hunter. He's at five. Yeah. With the hero power, that's that's four, and the swipe is lethal. Every top deck swipe is lethal. And hunter is not a deck that is going to gain life. So oh. as long as you don't just get outraced before you draw the damage you need, you know that that draw will seal the game for you at any time. They have no way to prevent themselves getting swiped in the face, for example, when they drop below four, you know, lower there about the format, no way to gain real, no, no real way to gain any life that's commonly played in the deck, although we are dealing with Pantry Spider Hunter here, so nothing is out of the question. Why the Pantry Spider? I mean, I know they're both beasts, right? It's kind of cool with Houndmaster. It's, it's a phenomenal Houndmaster target. It's a great thing to have around activating Kill Command. It's, it's great against, um, it's great, it's decent in the mirror, Mm -hmm. um, because of uh, you know kindly grandmother interactions, for example. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, but yeah, I like like I said, the, this seems to be a, a hunter's mark consideration as well. We saw the double flame juggler come down as well. So Bailey definitely definitely has some uh, interesting ideas as to how to build this deck. Would have been really interesting to now like like see how the game would develop if that coin would have been at two two. Yeah, I agree. It but looks no, like he is yet. still oh. comfortably favorite to win the game at the moment, though, especially now having picked up that Living Roots. He's so very near Oh, there. my God, here we that go. That will do it. The power of Yog Druid 3-0 win. And we talked about this, all the different threats and things that Yog Druid had it have in them. We saw three very different wins for yeah. Yog Druid in this series, played in three different ways. But nonetheless, 3-0 to Yog Druid, it remains. I, Alex, Alex is here. We yeah. promise you. <laughs> <laughs> As I can, there we go. Hey. Hello, guys. Hey, buddy. Uh, yeah, what a crazy set overall. I mean, we all we've discussed this to a quite large extent, even just yesterday when we were, you know, seeing what's going on in the Swiss. Yeah. Is that like Yog Druid is actually just super powerful? You know, like even right. just the, the, but even just without Yog in general, just the actual mm -hmm. deck itself is really strong. Yep. Um, and we just saw the power of it then, and I don't even think there was too much Faley could even done in most of those games. It just seemed like overall, there was a, just a few points that were just spiraling out of control for him. Well, yeah, to be honest, I think it's just the game one that it is biting him back. The Shaman game? Yeah, the yeah, Shaman yeah, game. Right. If you would have 
trade differently with mm -hmm. just the Trog into the Druid of the Claw and then went from it with the damage, he might just turn the game completely around, right. eliminate the Druid from the match and don't lose 3-0 against it.